child prodigy, nine-year-old Professor Sorbonne Isaac Barry, will, bestow, will be bestowed with the Da Vinci Laureate by the Da Vinci Institute this week. Barry, also known as the Einstein of our time, is a professor who specializes in maths and science. He was born in 2012. He is an, Amer an Asian-American author and the world's youngest professor. He is also nominated for a Nobel Prize. Let's now cross to my colleague, Matlako Kumane, who has more for us. Matlako, thank you very much. Over to you. Bumi, we are indeed here in Santon and we have, um, you know, the child prodigy, uh, Professor Bari, and he's just going to tell us a little bit about, you know, how, what, what does it take to be this smart, um, so young and to have achieved so much. I understand that he is invited into the country by uh, the Da Vinci Institute and he will be, um, you know, today at their graduations, he'll be speaking there. I'm just going to speak to Mr. Chavo Mozilla and he's just going to tell us, he is the chairman of the Da Vinci Institute, what made them choose uh, Professor Barry, how did they come across his work? Because I know for a lot of us it was the first time that we heard of, of, of this young man that we actually have a living and breathing Einstein in, in 2021. Um, Mr. Chabot, can you just tell us, you know, what was, what, what, was, what was the decision based on? How did you discover uh, Professor Barry? So from the Da Vinci Institute, each year we look at a Da Vinci laureate, a social architect, an individual who impacts society beyond just the immediate surroundings. And when you look around the world, uh, we found that Professor Barry, at his age, is already beginning to impact uh, complex systems uh, through his passion of maths and science, because we do uh, look for such individuals uh, that are amongst us. Thank you so much, Mr. Siap. And, uh, you know, Professor Bari, I, I, are you comfortable with that? You're good with that. Can you just tell us, I mean, at, at what age, I, I, I read that you were at six months, you were able to, you are already, you know, talking and you are able to engage with people. Can you just, you know, tell us about um, your, your, your young years and at which age did you, you know, discover that you were really good with maths and science? Well, I, I, at six months old, I feel like that was my first achievement to be able to talk in at least a full sort of coherent sentence. And I, and I started to, well, uh, really get fascinated with the math and science at the age of like one and two. And my father was like a math and physics student. And so he was like doing, uh, and so he was like, when he was studying at university and college, he was doing uh, this equation and that equation and I would see him writing all this stuff down on the blackboard and I would be thinking what do the, uh, what does this symbol all this stuff mean and, and I was fascinated with that kind of thing uh, especially because I would see the repetition in those symbols and uh, I would think oh, okay so there is some kind of system here but I never knew I uh, what those stuff actually meant and so you know, one day my father caught my fascination with these so I took it just, uh, uh, I messed up just a bit of courage and hobbled up to the board and started copying down all the equations. And so my father saw this fascination in me uh, with all the uh, these equations and well, my fascination with how and the imaginative and experimentative sector of science and so that that's what really got me into science uh, i was really interested in that imaginative part and that's something that schools don't usually show you schools usually show the boring equation full side uh, side of math and science that well uh, and that makes science boring for lots of people but uh, it was really fascinating for me i uh, don't uh, because I saw uh, that you could imagine in math and science, and that way is one of the most important things in math and science. And I think that uh, the uh, creativity and the capacity to imagine is one of the most important things, especially in math and, uh, math and science, not only in art. And so you're a professor, but I, I heard you earlier on when we spoke that you decided to rather go to eighth grade and you were skipping grades. Tell us about your school experience. At which age you thought, ah, oh, let me just go to school. How did that go? I feel like my school experience had been good so far, but that is only because uh, I live in a moderately rich neighborhood, and no, that is not the case for everyone. 
uh, most people don't get a good education from their school because their teachers are not passionate, but rather people who are either in it for the money or just because uh, they uh, have nothing else to do. And so the thing is, this kind of uh, those kind of teachers uh, who are not passionate, but rather are only doing it for the uh, money, don't work really that well with their students. They don't really work with the students, and they don't really uh, practice with the equations. They don't really know what they're talking about. All they know is the equations, the material they're talking about. Not really actually the whole thing, the entire idea, the whole branch of ideas of what they're talking about. And so I, uh, it's actually really hard to get a really good, engaging teacher who can not only teach you the basic ideas and facts and complicated systems that are math and science and the part that school does to you, but also the imaginative, experimentative, and discovery sec uh, fuel sector of, uh, well, math and science. And I think that that is very important in becoming a good teacher. And that is what uh, really happened in my math and science uh, classes. And so my schooling experience has been really uh, good, but I don't uh, think that is the case for everyone, especially people who don't even have access to a quality education. And also, so which grade are you in now? What, what, what? Uh, in terms of your levels, where, where are you at? Where are you thinking that you, you want to go to? Do you have anything specific that you want to achieve in terms of a career, or are you going to stick to the maths and science? I really, I really want to at least become somebody with like a professor because I want to try and change the educational system, and I want to inspire at least one other person to, uh, to make go make a revolutionary breakthrough and think creatively and I want to show at least uh, uh, the, uh, at least the amount of people that is in a class that math and science is not what they show it to be but rather actually a really fun uh, a really fun set of uh, a really fun set of numbers and ideas that are only built together by a few loose rules and sometimes these rules can be added sometimes they can be broken by will and it's a actually just a really fun way to think creatively and it can get you places that you can't imagine and so I want to uh, the, uh, my career goal for the future is to at least become a professor and to show the world that math and science is not what they show it to be but rather actually a really fun uh, way to discover to experiment and to advance our world and observe the natural world and in terms of colleges have you had an idea yeah, where you want to go, you know, are you, are you interested in any of them? I am interested especially in the Ivy League universities, but uh, uh, and I have really a vision to go to at least the top five university. So I am uh, really ha uh, have the you know, kind of ambition, and I uh, want to persevere. And I want to persevere in order to get there. And so I think that it is very important to. I think it is very important to at least get an education from one of the most quality schools out there, like Harvard or Princeton or something of the like. So uh, I have a goal to get into at least a top five university. Mm, and you said earlier you, were, you you weren't physically ready for the 12th grade. You decided to start at 8th grade. I don't, I don't think I'm ready for 12th grade right now. Yeah, I, I, even though uh, I uh, it shows my grade level is there, I don't think I'm like actually ready for 12th grade and to graduate into college so early. And I want to take the spelling bee as well. So, so you're also a keen speller. Uh yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Professor Barry. No problem. Thank you. Um, you've heard the Nompu. That is uh, Professor Bari. He is the 11-year-old Einstein of our time, you know, speaking about maths and science and just saying how he has a passion for this and also wanting to inspire other young people. And also speaking to um, quite interesting topical issues, saying that, you know, a lot of uh, people that are in, in, in the career of, you know, educating children in those particular subjects aren't necessarily well clued up, according to him. And also, I suppose, the passion that he speaks 
sense that you need to have this particular passion and also um, creativity, saying that it's not really that hard. And I think that is where he wants to find himself, um, you know, also wanting to study at those Ivy League institutions. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's been quite fascinating. As you can hear, he's well articulated um, and well, well versed in how he speaks. But he's, for now, I think um, the challenge that he does want to take up is that of the spelling bee. Numpu? Thanks very much uh, for that, Matlako, for uh, speaking to that young professor. Uh, he's nine years old. He was born in 2012, uh, Sobono Isaac Bari. Um, he says that not many teachers are actually inspired to teach. That's his view. And he says there are very few of us who are fortunate to have the kind of access that he's had. That's all from the On Point team this afternoon. SA Today will have more news for you at the top of the hour. Do have a pleasant one.